The Charlotte Podcast Festival is presented by Blumenthal Performing Arts, the Queen City Podcast Network, Eclex Creative Agency, and WFAE, Charlotte's NPR news source. The home of acclaimed podcast, Charlotte Talks, She Sets, The List, Amplifier, Southbound, and FAQ City. Learn more about WFAE and our latest podcast, Work It, at WFAE.org. Hi, welcome to the Charlotte Podcast Festival. My name is Sarah Pollack. Um, I am the production manager at Queen City Podcast Network, and I'll be your moderator for this hour of the Charlotte Podcast Festival. Um, Charlotte's first podcast festival, presented by WFAE, Charlotte's NPR news source, um, Queen City Podcast Network, Blumenthal Performing Arts, and Equix Creative Agency. Um, this hour's session is Audio Editing 101 Hindenburg. This hour, Michael Falera will be going through Hindenburg's uh, basic features and then some advanced ones. Let's meet your host. So Michael Falero is an audio journalist and podcast producer. He's currently serving as a reporting fellow for WFAE, co covering voting and the 2020 election. He previously reported on energy and the environment. Michael has also produced a number of podcasts for the Queen City Podcast Network, as well as the local politics podcast, uh, Backyard Cambridge. He is a graduate of the acclaimed Transom Story Workshop on Cape Cod, and his stories have appeared on NPR, WFAE, WCIA, West Virginia, Public Broadcasting, and more. At the end, we look forward to answering audio, or audience questions, while, there are audio also, um, while we ask that your audio remains muted for the session, you can leave your questions in the Zoom chat box, and we will answer them towards the end of the hour. Um, a reminder to the audience that this session will be recorded and made available over email, so be sure to check your emails um, in the near future, um, including your spam and junk folders this, um, to get the, the sessions recording. We encourage you to check out the full list of sessions on the Charlotte Podcast Festival website and share about the session on social media using the hashtag CLTPodcastFest. Uh, you can even support the festival by purchasing a brand new Charlotte po Podcast Festival shirt on our website. That's charlottepodcastfestival.com. With that said, let's get started. Hey everybody, um, I'm Michael, as Sarah was just mentioning. I am going to share my screen. This will be a heavy uh, looking at my screen and not at me setup. Um, Sarah, can you confirm that I am indeed sharing my screen? I think I am. You are. Great. Uh, so we're going to go through a lot of things. Um, it's going to go over the basics of Hindenburg, how to use it as a podcaster. I'm imagining a lot of you are podcasting. Um, maybe you have some guests on your show. So I'll go through how you would use that. Um, and starting out as someone maybe who hasn't used an editor much, um, there are a lot of things that Hindenburg does that are similar with other editors if you use them, uh, other editors, but it also has some unique features. So we'll go through that. Um, and if I may go a little fast in terms of mentioning shortcuts and things. Don't worry about um, uh, missing them, uh, not just because of the recording that Sarah mentioned, but also I'll be sharing something at the end. It will be a nice uh, guide for some of the shortcut keys that I'll mention that um, I really encourage learning because they're so useful. They make editing so much faster. So let's get started. Uh, so the first thing is the layout of Hindenburg and how to set up a session. Uh, let's look at what Hindenburg actually looks like. This is Hindenburg right here. Um, it is a pretty basic uh, setup of an audio editor. It's not super overwhelming. So we'll go through a few things here that um, are, you need to know the structure of so that you feel comfortable with it. First thing is the tracks. There are four tracks to start with. Uh, you'll see that they are named one, two, three, four. And uh, you'll see I'm clicking on them. You'll, you'll notice that as I click through tracks, they turn a light blue from the kind of gray brown that they are. That's important for later. But just know you've got four tracks here. Um, I would suggest you think about tracks as um, one track is one distinct voice. Uh, and this kind of goes across all audio editors, whichever you end up using. But for podcasting especially, um, it's really helpful to keep all of one voice on one track. So what does that mean? So if you're a host of a podcast, um, you might want to keep all of your audio on the first track up here. You may want to consider if you have a guest on your show, keeping them on track two. Maybe you've got some music that can go on track three if you're transitioning from one section to another. Um, and then maybe you've got some other sound effects. So you've got field sound that um, 
you know, just add some complexity to the show. That's something you can put in another track. You're, you can add more tracks and we'll talk about that later, but think about tracks as distinct voices. All right, so let's look at the track headers. These are the track headers right here. I hope you guys can see my mouse. Um, it is the, they're the same controls for each track. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. We'll go over just a few things and we'll go into them in more depth a little bit later on. Uh, you'll notice that each track has a name. You can click on it and uh, rename it. Um, you know, if you're going to be one voice, like I said, on one track, you're going to want to name that yourself or whatever makes sense to you. You can uh, double click it, rewrite something just as you would in a word at document and hit enter to rename it. Um, the two things here, I'm not going to spend too much time on. This is the overall track volume, this little thing with the, the speaker um, that can increase the volume of your track overall. I don't use that particularly much. I've used, I, I like to fine tune my audio on my tracks more, but just know that it is there. The second thing is panning, uh, which is moving uh, things from the, the center. If you think about having headphones on, moving uh, to the left, panning left would make something only in the left ear versus panning to the right would be only in the right ear. Again, that's really high level um, sound effects. I, I wouldn't suggest that for an interview podcast. You rarely use that, so not gonna cover that really much here. The next things are the arm record button, which is the first step to recording. We'll talk about recording in just a second, but that is the little red dot here. That does not record, but it sets you up for recording. The other ones here <clears throat> are mute and solo. Mute is if you don't wanna hear a track as you're editing and you wanna hear the other ones, you can mute this one in the audio, even if the um, track header goes over it. Uh, sorry, the, the the playhead goes over it, which is this white line we'll talk about in a second. Um, basically, you're turning that track off so you can't hear it. Solo is the opposite. If you want to mute everything else, but just hear this one, you can hit solo. And those are respectively M and S. Um, again, we'll use that more when we're editing, but just know that is there. This is the effects window, which we'll talk about later. And there are some more settings under this window right here uh, that we'll talk about later. But that is the track header. It's very basic. It's very easy to use. Uh, the next thing to know is the thing at the bottom. Look at the bottom here. You've got a track uh, transport bar, sorry, transport bar, which has things you would expect in an audio editor. Um, this first button goes to the, the very beginning. You've got a rewind and fast forward, stop, play, record, very basic. Uh, the main thing I want you to know here is that you should never really be touching these buttons of play and stop. Instead, you can hit um, space and it will start playing and you can hit space again to stop. So that is kind of basic movement uh, in the track transport bar. Uh, the next thing here is a, a uh, levels meter, which is very important for making sure that your podcast is going to sound good. It's going to sound even and kind of pleasant to the ear and you're not going to have any soft sections or super loud sections. Um, we'll talk about that more as we edit audio, but just know that that is here. And as you have audio in the track, which we'll have in just a second, you'll see um, kind of a bouncing level of different colors up this um, level meter. Next thing is your time clock, which is kind of just tells you where on the track you are located, which is uh, measured in time. And you've got also in and out and time lengths here, which is a little more detailed, but just know that this, it's telling you where you're highlighting right now time-wise. Again, the tracks are measured in time. Uh, up at the top, we've got some very nicely laid out um, buttons that are very common to a lot of audio editors, but laid out very nicely and very cleanly here. You've got new, which is just making a new project. Very uh, easy. When I'm reporting, I'll often, you know, work on one story in Hindenburg and then I'll save it and just hit new, just get a fresh one. Super easy to start a new project. Open and save, pretty explanatory. Uh, import and export, we'll talk about those in a little bit. Publish, I don't really use very much. And then these are uh, common editing tools that you might use in Hindenburg that I don't want you to ever really touch because ideally you'd learn the shortcuts that I'm going to teach you that do the same functions. So cutting audio and copying audio, we'll go over those things, how you use shortcuts to do that. But know that they are there. If you forget the shortcut, it's labeled very clearly right there. Um, undo and redo, again, same as a Word document. If you make a mistake, you can always undo it. Uh, Hindenburg uses what's called non-destructive editing. So if you make a mistake in Hindenburg, as long as you've not saved recently, um, it's very likely you can undo your mistake and, 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 and do it better. Uh, in and out is zooming. Uh, we'll talk about how to zoom easier. Um, it's again, pretty easy, pretty uh, straightforward here. Uh, I, again, all these buttons I don't really use much because much you can use shortcuts instead. All right, uh, the right side, you might notice it looks a little different. This is the clipboard area. This is my favorite feature of Hindenburg, which is that you should think of the clipboards as bins where you can keep things, organize them. I love organizing audio in different ways. 
they are going to be really helpful, especially if you have bigger projects or if you have a big podcast episode you're working on, that you can keep audio in them and pull them back out and it interacts really well with the tracks here. We'll talk about how that does that a little bit later. So that is the layout of Hindenburg. Um, the first thing I want to talk about besides that is how to save a session. Very sexy file management. Really important with Hindenburg. Why is that? Because the best, uh, the, the thing about Hindenburg is if you don't treat your files very well, uh, it may break or it may, um, you might lose audio. There's things called desyncing. But the thing you need to know is whenever you start a new session, hit new. You're in a brand new session. There's nothing in here. We're going to save our session. Now, why we do that is because Hindenburg needs to have a save file for your podcast. So let's go ahead and hit save. Pretty easy. And we are going to save this podcast episode. Let's say podcast episode one. And we are going to save. All right. So what has happened here is we're actually creating two things. We are creating the episode session file, which is right here, podcast episode one. That is um, That represents this, what you kind of are working in, right? So it's called a Hindenburg session. Uh, I forget the extension of it, but it's it's got a little H next to it. That is what you click to open. So whenever you save a Hindenburg session, you've saved a certain name, this is what you're going to click to open the session when you start up again, say you're editing uh, the next day or something. It also creates this other thing, which is um, a file folder. So whenever you create a session, you also create a file folder that has the same name. It's automatically created. It's just whatever you named it plus files. And what Hindenburg's doing here is it's taking all your audio and it's placing it in one bin. And it's saying, okay, you know, Jane Smith's podcast episode one is going to have this audio because the audio is not in the file here, it's actually in the folder. So the things I'll say about this, uh, no need to get into the super nitty gritty details of it. Always keep the podcast session file and the file folder in the same place and you'll be good. Because uh, if you move them separately, whenever you open a session file, they'll be like, hey, I don't know where the audio went. So it's always good to keep the file folder in the same place. Um, you can move them together if you wanna put them on a USB stick, you just make sure that you move both the session file and the file folder and everything will be good. Uh, okay, so that is, oh, the last thing is when we talk about moving uh, audio into an editor, which we'll do in just a few minutes, I want to make sure that you have renamed the audio, whatever you want it to be named in the Hindenburg session. So if you have a song that you want to use and you've got the song title as the name of the audio, then like I've got some music in here, I'm going to have this, the song name be what I, this is what I want it to say. Make sure it's renamed before you put it in Hindenburg. The reason is when you rename something in Hindenburg, let's say you've got an interview with Joe and you it's got a bunch of gobbledygook because you pulled it from Skype or whatever. Rename it before you put it in because changing it in Hindenburg is not going to change it in your file system. So always do that first. Uh, it just keeps everything nice and clean. So always keep these two things together and rename your audio before you put it into Hindenburg and you'll be good. Uh, the last thing is... Hindenburg auto saves. So you notice when I make a change, there's a little asterisk up at the top. That means there are unsaved changes. Although Hindenburg makes uh, auto saves every one minute that you can essentially, um, if your computer crashes or Hindenburg crashes, you can save it to a, to a point. You know, hopefully you haven't done too much editing in the last minute, but um, always, it's always good to just hit save every so often if you see that asterisk um, and you haven't saved in a while, always good practice. All right, next thing uh, is recording. Hindenburg is really good for recording things. It's super easy to record things directly in Hindenburg. So for a podcaster, this might be something like uh, you might be recording narration for the introduction to your podcast, or you can record directly into Hindenburg. Um, as you're interviewing someone over Skype or Zoom, right? You can record your side into it and use Hindenburg as a recipient for that audio. So it's already located in there and it's, it's you know, once you are ready to edit your podcast, your side's already in there. So how do we do that? First, you need to check your hardware. Once you open Hindenburg for the first time, make sure that your uh, microphone, whether it's a USB microphone or something else, is connected to Hindenburg. And the way you do that is go to tools up at the top and hit options. Now, uh, but a little window will show up. Uh, that doesn't expand. Uh, and you're going to look for the record section and click the drop-down menu. Now, my audio setup is very complicated, so you're not going to be seeing a lot of this. You're going to see probably if you've got a USB microphone plugged in, you'll see the name of that USB microphone, and it might say USB. Uh, I actually have one right here that I actually I'm surprised that it shows up here. Um, but you're going to pick a microphone that 
you know the name of it, uh, you've plugged it in, you know it works. Similar to how you might look in your sound settings for your computer, um, it will show up here. You're gonna click on that and it will be your recording device. And then you hit okay. Once you do that, you're going to go to the track you wanna record on. So say that this is your track because you're the host. You're gonna hit arm record. This is the first, like I said, this is the, the first step to recording, but it is not recording. Uh, we know that because the record button, which is actually the button you use, is blinking and the time clock is not moving. So I'm just gonna make sure that I can. So we're gonna hit the arm record button and then we're gonna hit record. Now what happens is you're gonna start seeing a red block here and that is showing you that you are recording directly onto the track and it's going to be obviously because you're recording in real time it's going to be going across the track in real time now i'm not recording because of the the presentation setup i have here for you all but you're going to be seeing uh hopefully you're going to be seeing um peaks little gray peaks that show up as you're talking and that's a good way to check if you want to test your recording before you go onto skype and you interview this person you booked you want to make sure that um you've test recorded with your settings and your voice is showing up you can record and then you know say a few things and then hit stop at the bottom here and then it's going to turn uh, yellow and then you can kind of go over it and hit space and listen back and of course if you actually had some audio on there it would play back and you would hear it so you'd know that it, it would work um, you can also just continue recording do another recording here again it starts up it starts creating this red rectangle so that is recording the again you need to be looking for the solid red light at the bottom to make sure that it's recording it's creating this red box and also that you have this time clock is moving it'll be pretty obvious if it's not recording just double check that before you go into any sort of interview setup that you are actually recording okay let's get to the thing i think all of you are here for which is editing there are a few ways to get audio into your editor in hindenburg so that you can actually start editing. The first thing is the import button, which I don't really use very much, but if you're comfortable using it, that is perfectly fine. Um, you can do that by hitting import and then it will open up your file explorer or your finder if you're on Mac. Uh, and then it will, you can drag some audio in by just clicking on an audio file. This is a WAV file right here. And you just hit open and it's gonna place it right where your playhead is. Again, I keep saying this word playhead. Playhead is the white line that essentially tells you where you are located in Hindenburg at any one time. And you can move it around by moving your cursor and clicking and it will move the playhead. So the, the player has, uh, Hindenburg has placed the audio at the front of the playhead. This is an interview that I'll be working on in a few minutes. Um, but this is my audio here. You can see what I mean by the gray peaks. This is what you want to look for when you are recording. And it's that little red rectangle. Um, this uh, Hindenburg is interesting because it shows peaks like this instead of waveforms, um, but I prefer it. All right, so that is importing with the import button. There are two other ways, uh, actually one other way, two total. The other way is to click and drag from a file folder or finder if you're on Mac, which I feel like a lot of us are very uh, comfortable with. Open your file folder. This is just a file folder on my computer and I can pull in the file on my own, just click and drop, just like that. And it will process it, it's a long file, so it's taking a few seconds to essentially um, analyze the file and then it will show the peaks in just a second as it gets processed. The last way you can import, actually there is a third way, the last way you can import audio is you can import it directly to the clipboard. See, it's already processed it right there. You can import by, again, clicking and dragging from a file folder straight into a clipboard. And we'll talk a little bit more about a clipboard in just a second, um, but just know you can click and drop into these bins just like you would onto the tracks, okay? All right, so let's actually do some editing. I'm gonna pull up another session that I have prepared for you all. So this is a very similar setup to what you all might be experiencing, which is you've got one host and you've got one uh, guest, maybe it's you know an interview guest for a book, or maybe it's someone who's in business or something. Someone you booked, and it's a two-person interview, uh, and you intro to, intro them, and you have a conversation. So this is very similar to what you would be seeing, which is you have one track for you and one track for the guest. And what I've done here is I've interviewed uh, this uh, person named Kyle Bass. He's a journalist in West Virginia who started an investigative journalism site. Kyle and I went to Transom together. So I interviewed him, asking him about this journalism site, uh, and it's a very good example of again just a back and forth 
pretty simple way of editing a podcast and Hindenburg is a great way to um, edit that podcast because it's, it, again, it simplifies and keeps everything pretty easy. So let's actually start editing. When I talk about editing, I'm going to be talking about something called regions. Now regions are, uh, you notice how everything's blue here, but if you click on one of them, it actually turns yellow. That is a region. A region is defined as any segment of audio that has, you can tell it's a rectangle, it's got a start and a finish to it. When you insert um, a fresh um, file, the whole thing will be one region. But as you cut it up, you obviously have multiple regions because you're essentially moving audio around. Most important thing I just referenced is cutting. So we are going to practice cutting. Cutting is, or splitting is another word for it, which you can see at the top here is the button for it. Splitting is uh, cutting in half a region into two, two separate segments so that you can move them around. So I'm going to, I've got this question here. Uh, I actually, hopefully I can, you guys can hear this. I've got a question I asked Kyle. Hey, stand up, start up. Uh, yeah, okay, stand okay. up. Cool, I, cool, I, cool. Let me so you and I are both audio trained journalists. We went to the same program. And so when you uh, yeah, 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 I talk to as long. a journalist inform or change your print journalism. So it was, it was actually really. So I'm asking him a question and he answers. Great. I'm actually going to want to cut away from my audio after I ask the question because uh, it's just dead air. And you can notice um, if you look at the little rising and peaks right here, uh, it's a little loud because I moved around in my chair. So I'm going to cut this or split it by clicking on it. So the playhead, you can see the white line here is right there. And I'm going to hit the uh, key B. B is probably the most important key in Hindenburg because it is how you cut regions. So what, what's happened here? So we've cut from one region to two. And you can tell because I can click on either one and it turns yellow. That is cutting. Now, there's actually something else we can do, which is we can do a more complicated cut that I use just as often. If we go to another area here, you can tell I actually um, actually have a, again, I'm, my, my chair is super noisy. So I had this weird um, part right here where my chair made some noise or something. Um, and you can kind of hear it in the background while Kyle is then, thinking through yeah, an answer. Think... What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight and instead of what I did before, which is click and hit B, which is to cut. Instead, I'm going to highlight and click B. Now what that's done is actually it's made two cuts. I have isolated a clip, or in this case, something I actually don't want, and I have highlighted it on either side. It's cut on either side. So this creates two splits instead of one. That is just selecting and B. Again, something that is super, super useful. If you get um, good at Hindenburg, you'll be doing that all the time for cutting out things you don't want. Or another example would be if Kyle's got a really great answer, like say he's got an idea right here. Being able to just like throw all the gear aside and just go into a conversation. Like maybe that's a quote that I want to use for a promo um, for your podcast. You can cut on either side of it by highlighting and hitting B, just like that. So two pretty simple things, but very powerful things. Next thing is going to be trimming. Trimming is a way of cutting, but it is on the side, on the ends of a clip. So first thing we're going to do, I've got a question here. That definitely makes sense. Did that, let's say that I, or did you feel like, say that I screwed up here or that actually, you know what happened? I thought a little bit too long before my question. Here's the question. And here is me thinking because I got distracted or something. So what's going to happen is I am going to highlight and cut the entire question on either side. I'm splitting on either side. So you've got this region here. You can tell it's yellow. And I'm going to grab on one side of the region. And if you look at the side of the region when I hover over it, it turns into this sideways arrow. And what that is is that's actually uh, it's, it's, it's changing the function that's going to happen when I uh, click on it. So when I click on this with the uh, sideways arrow and I pull inwards, it is now trimming. So what's happening here is actually if I play over it now, it's nothing. But definitely, and then I start. So that is trimming that's super useful for when you have excess on clips or in this case, let's say... Well, so in my... in, in I So Kyle actually had a mistake here which is that he started an idea and then he kind of started again, which is very common for interviews. And if it's particularly bad, then maybe you want to edit it. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight, hit B, 
and we are going to have trimmed it on either, or sorry, uh, split it on either side. And we will select it and trim it inwards so that we just have the good part. In, in. So that is a good use of trimming. Next thing is I want you guys to think about um, these regions, these things I've talked about as building blocks for your podcast. Things you can move around. Once you've clicked on this, uh, highlighted this, uh, this region, you can move it around. You can change it on tracks by clicking and dragging it. Um, one interesting thing about Hindenburg is that if you move a region like this and you kind of try to move it up against a, another region, like say this one, it actually won't go over. It actually resists going over it until you push harder and then it will go over it and then it will, it will uh, trim, essentially trim for you the next region and kind of overwrite it. Um, that's very useful for editing, but uh, just know that you can move these around um, and, and with a lot of the other tricks I'm going to show you, um, just think about them as like, I like to think of them as like arts and crafts for your podcast. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are the tools by which you make a good sounding podcast and um, it's very flexible. Hindenburg is very flexible for how you make that sound. So uh, let's talk really quickly about uh, one thing I'm doing, which is I am highlighting a lot. You'll notice that if I click and drag, I'm highlighting audio. I did that with, um, you know, selecting some audio to cut, to split on either side. I hit, I selected and hit B. What's happening here is I'm selecting an input and an output. See this uh, actually green arrow at the top here. That is the start basically of my selected area. And the red line is the end of it. So that actually, if I select this area, let's say I want to hear what Kyle had to say here, I would select from here to here, and then I would hit, uh, hit to the space bar, which is the play button, or you can hit the play button at the very bottom. But again, I try and go for the shortcuts. It will start so in the third in the story I did for my site. It was kind of a recap of he starts at the green line, and if I continue to play, he would um, he would go past the red line actually. But this input and output selector is kind of a good guide for where you're working in when you show you things. That'll be important for things like fading that we'll do in just a second. Another kind of moving around tip is uh, zooming. Zooming is really important for kind of cutting audio closely. Um, so what one thing you can do is you can use the zoom buttons up here, but again, try for shortcuts. I find it's really helpful to use the shortcut, which is just the scroll wheel on your mouse. Uh, if you have an external mouse, you can scroll in with the scroll wheel. Pretty easy, go in and out. It will follow wherever your mouse is located. So let's say I'm working over here and then, oh, I remember that he said something over here I need to check. Um, I can just hover over and zoom in and then scroll out, scroll out. Uh, there's actually another trick with a scroll wheel, which is instead of going in and out, you can go sideways, which is again, shift, this is shift scroll wheel. Uh, in either direction, it will go horizontal. So that's actually really helpful if you say have a 20 minute interview and you're trying to find, oh crap, where did they talk about marketing your business or something? You can scroll around and look, okay, where was that question? Oh, is it this question? Maybe not. Um. Maybe it's this one, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to get comfortable with Hindenburg and start moving around really fast, which is something I uh, definitely do. Last thing uh, before we move on to more advanced stuff is you can, again, like I said, these regions are kind of building blocks. You can rename them. So this is a question I asked about. Wait, it asked makes about. sense. Did that take some adjust? So this is about, I asked him about adjusting from audio journalism to print journalism. And let's say I particularly like that question or I want to note it later. Instead of just having my name on it, which is this is the audio from, uh, this is the name of the file that I pulled in. Instead, I can hit enter and I can rename question about transitioning to print. Okay, and I hit enter again. Again, same thing as these uh, track names. You can rename regions that you uh, have in front of you for more uh, understandable kind of editing purposes, remembering where things are. That's really helpful. I use that all the time for audio and you know, as a reporter for answers that I really like or just things I wanna keep track of for later. So that is highlighting a region just by clicking on it and hitting enter and then typing in a name and hitting enter again. Okay, where are we now? All right, let's talk about more advanced stuff. We're going to, I'm a little behind here. Uh, we're gonna talk about fading and ripple editing. So the first thing with the ripple editing is if you are, if you're editing an interview podcast and you know what you're gonna cut is just, you, you know you don't want it. And instead of, let's say I have a question here I didn't like or something, 
uh, and I didn't like his answer. Or it got, it went, you know, went badly or something. You can highlight the whole thing. And instead of, you know, hitting B to select either side of it and then hitting the delete key to delete it, um, you can actually do something that combines all these things in one and actually does more. So what you can do is you can highlight the section. Let's say you've listened to it and you're like, oh, that was a crappy question. I didn't, I shouldn't have asked that. Highlight the whole thing. And you can actually highlight multiple tracks by not just highlighting this track, but then going upwards. And you'll see that this is now shaded and you can tell that you're doing two tracks because the track header is now blue. These names will always be blue when it's highlighted when this track is being active. So now I have highlighted not just the bottom one here, but the top one. All right, so I've got my crappy question and my crappy answer, and I'm gonna highlight it and hit X. So what happened there? What happened is I did a few things in one button, which is I highlighted the thing, I hit, it essentially does the same thing as hitting B to select it yellow and then delete, but more importantly, it also takes everything after it and moves it down, which is called ripple editing. So X is a very powerful key to hit if you know exactly what you're doing in terms of you don't want the content, but also, and this is really especially for interview podcasts, you wanna make sure that you are selecting all the relevant tracks. So what would happen if I just uh, selected my track and say, oh, here's a crappy question and hit X. Well, you notice that everything on my track moved down, but Kyle didn't. So actually, if I listen to Kyle now, here's his crappy answer. I don't know if it's actually crappy, but here's his crappy answer. Um, like a standard. Right. And now we're at a sync because uh, my audio is actually further down. So that is the, that is what we call, um, that is me editing, trying to ripple edit, but not actually ripple editing. So remember X is just kind of this powerful tool. You don't have to use it, but know that it is there. It's kind of a version of the B key, the split key, where as long as you highlight every single track that needs to move, uh, if that's you and your guest, or if you've got music on this last track, maybe it's you, your guest and the music. Um, this is really important if, if you're creating a podcast that's really produced, making sure everything stays in sync, highlight, and then hit X. Again, not something you need to use, but helpful to have if you do, if you do want to use it. Next thing is fading. Fading is super, super important uh, because we do not want butt cuts. What are butt cuts? Let's go to a section here. We are going to... Here's another question. What is, what is the media landscape like? I'm asking you about media landscape in West Virginia. Um, and he's gonna answer the question right there. So again, I've got some um, backgrounds and this is called, the, this is room tone. This is the sound of my room behind me. Not particularly interesting to have behind me. So I am going to split it and delete it because we don't want that. And we're gonna move this out just a little bit. So this is something to consider for everything that you do in Hindenburg, but really any audio editing software will do this, is fading. How do we fade? Fading is having, uh, well, what is fading? Fading is gradually changing the sound of audio so that it doesn't sound jarring to the listener. Um, and when I said we don't want butt cuts, we don't want anything that just looks like a rectangle on its own like this, because if I, let's say if I had a, you know, I, I cut something off, sometimes when I'm a, a reporting and I'll cut someone off halfway through an answer because they digress or they continue on. We've gone through a lot of trials and that's really jarring. So we always want to fade things out so that they sound nicer so your listener doesn't notice that you faded something out. So what we do is we take the end of a region. Again, a region is what I'm highlighting right here. You're going to go to the very top. You'll notice there's a rectangle and that rectangle is what you're going to click on and drag in. Hindenburg makes this really nice thing where you can see all your fades as, as um, diagonal lines. So that is a fade and it fades out Since from recently. my question. Since recently. And then it kind of fades out to the background sound of my room uh, uh, kind of nicely. That is really important. Again, always try and fade in and out of an interview. In, in, in an interview podcast setting, it's pretty much going to look like this where you are kind of transitioning from one section of your your question or your point or whatever you said and then fading out and then fading into the next person like this so this is a lot of what more or less your podcast editing should look like where you're going from one person to the next now sometimes like right here i'd sort of yeah See, this is the, I have things soloed. You notice I have this little S here and engaged is yellow. It's because I hit the solo button accidentally recently. 
You notice that Kyle made a, uh, a mouth noise, which is the bane of any audio producer. Uh, and we don't want that. So we're going to pull him in, trim him in so that he's right there. But this is a little broad, this is a little um, abrupt, especially if Kyle's background sound is really loud. Let's say he has an AC unit behind him. Um, Kyle doesn't because he's a very professional audio producer. He had a nice sounding um, soundproofed room. But if we had that problem, how do we solve it? Um, kind of tip for recording, which is to have room tone. And I have room tone at the end here. What is room tone? Room tone is um, whenever you, uh, do a podcast interview, I would suggest that you take 15 to 30 seconds and you do nothing, say nothing and have them say nothing if you can find the time to do it and record the background sound of the space that you're in. This is called the, this is called room tone. This is the tone of the room that you're in. And what that is, it's again, it's kind of like a glue or paste that you might use for editing your, your session. Hey, Michael. Mm-hmm. I'm just getting you a little five minutes uh, heads up because minutes. we're, we're going to um, go to, uh, we're going to go to audience questions by about uh, okay. 45 after. So just to let you Okay, know. cool. 45 after you said? Well, all right. they're about, um, we've got yeah. a lot of good questions. So Okay. Five. All right. All right. I will uh, go a little faster. Okay. So that is room tone. What we will use is I will copy this control C. That's kind of a basic copy function. And I will go back to my section where Kyle had that mouth noise. And again, I faded myself out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a bit of his room tone, which is actually my room tone, but I'll use mine. Again, this is background sound for a gradual sound. And I will place that and then I will pull it in because we don't need that much. And I will fade it all the way in. We always want to have trapezoids and triangles like this. We don't want to have any uh, kind of naked rectangles right there. So that'll sound a lot more gradual. Uh so that is fading. Uh, let's go to the clipboard as one of the last few things. The clipboard is super useful. Again, I use it for a lot of management of my audio. There are a few different ways you can pull things in to your clipboard, but the most common thing I will use is I will use the function control alt and then a number. So what I've got here, let's say I've got a quote here from Kyle that I particularly like. Uh, I had started a nonprofit. Talks about why he got into podcasting. Great Kyle, Kyle quote. I rename it. And then how do I get it into this little section here? Because the clipboard's kind of off on its own. You do control, alt, one. Now what I've done here is if you notice the group one, two, three, four, they each have uh, numbers next to them, but they also have this little segment to the top left that says alt one, alt two. I think on Mac it's option one, option two. That is telling you how to get things to your group. So to get to group one, you need to do alt one. To add things from the tracks, you just add one key, control alt one. If I wanna add this also to group two, control alt two. Again, great way to interact with um, clips, quotes, that, you know, things you wanna use for promos for your podcast. Um, to save for later in a way that's really organizable. Um, you can also rename these groups by double clicking on the name and say, okay, this is promo stuff, or this is, you know, amazing quotes, whatever you want to do, however you want to organize clipboards is really kind of up to you. And they're interchangeable. You can click and drag things between groups uh, pretty easily. The last thing about uh, clipboards is getting things back onto the tracks, which is super easy. Let's say you had a clip from your guest and you want to, you know, do a promo. You can just click and drag them on and they will be placed wherever you want to put them on whatever track. Okay. Um, last thing is, let's see, I've got a few more minutes. Um, let's talk about getting audio out of Hindenburg and then hopefully we'll have some questions about um, other editing stuff and I can get more into them. Once you've got your podcast edited, uh, and I hopefully it would be more edited than how I have it here, but let's say you've got your, your two-way interview podcast, you've interviewed your side, their side, you fade it in and out so it sounds nice, you've used room tone, um, it's, it's all ready to go. How do you get it out of Hindenburg? The way to get it out of Hindenburg is, well, there are a few ways. You can, you notice if you go to file, there is export and export selection. Export is to export everything in your Hindenburg session. So everything from 0000 to, in this case, it would be about 56 minutes. Everything goes out into a WAV file or an MP3 file, uh, all smushed together. I never use export. Export is not really what you're looking to do. You're looking to use export selection. So how do we actually use export selection? There are a few ways. So let's say your podcast is, let's say your podcast is all of, you know, maybe you only like the first part of your, your interview or you need to separate out your interview for something. 
what you can do is you can select the part of your podcast that you like or the area of your Hindenburg session rather and try and get all the tracks you need. So in this case, it's um, you know my track and Kyle's track and maybe, maybe you have some music at the end here that you wanna add in that's right here. So you wanna get three tracks in. So you select and go across all the tracks you need from start to finish and you're going to do file, export selection, my reporting stuff. And we're going to podcast episode one, um, export one. And you're going to save it as a WAV file. It's going to be an MP3 file if you're going to post a podcast because podcasts have to be an MP3 style. So actually, let's do MP3. It's going to be a lot smaller. So save. And it will just record. Let's do that. Let's cancel that because MP3s take forever to export um, because they're lossy. Uh, so let's just say we did that. And what happens is it only will, you'll only hear the sound for this section. That's why export selection is super useful because if Hindenburg sessions that you use or anything like mine, they're a disaster because they have so much thing, so many things going on. So what you want to do is just export the selection that is your final produced podcast, super nice, ready to go. You've, you've edited everything. It's got in and out music, things like that. That's export selection. There are a few other ways you can do that though. Let's say, again, you're trying to make a promo for your podcast and you've got a quote that you really like, or you want to put it on social. Then you can take that quote. So you've got a client. I had started a nonprofit. Say I've got a great quote here. Um, you, would, you can just export a region. So again, a region is anything we're clicking on that turns yellow. You can do that by right clicking and clicking export selection. And it will just export the thing that you have highlighted. And you just pick MP3 file and save. And it will save just as quote. You know, this one's about, you know, 30 seconds, just a 30 second file out of your podcast session. Um, I think that's it for exporting. Again, I try, and re I try and avoid the export button here because this is, again, your entire session and my sessions are a disaster. I only want to export a selection of it. Um, but you can do it either by right clicking on a region or if you've got multiple areas, you can highlight the tracks that you want. So if it's, you know, again, three tracks, highlight and Export selection, it will do everything with inside, inside that shaded area. Um, all right, looks like we're just about 6.45. Sarah, um, I'll go over just one thing before we start in just a minute. The one thing about the if, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Uh, we, I, we might get to some of those things in the question. Okay, all right, go for it. What we'll do, do Q&A now. Okay, I just, I, we have a lot of questions. Um, okay. Ones. They're good ones, okay, so. Um, Okay, so I guess uh, one that, that keeps coming up, um, Amber and Jim both asked, um, what are the pros and cons, I guess, of using Hindenburg versus GarageBand or, or any of the others that, that stand out? Yeah, well, Hindenburg is really great because Hindenburg is more geared towards people who are not dealing with music. Um, Hindenburg is made for reporters and journalists who are not always by their nature uh, music oriented or have studied music, whereas GarageBand has a lot of stuff in it that is, you've got MIDI keyboards and things like that where you can produce virtual music instruments. Um, the layout of, Hinden uh, of GarageBand I don't know super well, but Hindenburg is just really clean. Uh, and I think again, the clipboard area here really sets it apart as an organizational tool for if you're really organization, if you're kind of, you know, super organized like me, keeping things in one place and not having to, with a lot of audio editors like GarageBand or Pro Tools or things like that, um, you know, I use also one called Reaper. Um, there's no clipboard. You have to keep everything on your, um, on your tracks in certain areas. And that, you know, again, that makes it so that you have to only export certain parts of your session. If I've got a bunch of crap over here that I've edited out, um, or let's say I've got music that I pulled in, I've got a, you know, a, a song in here that I pulled in and I'm considering using it. Um, and a lot of editors, I have to, um, you know, move it off to the side, move it off to the little Southeast of my podcast session. Um, but with Hindenburg, I can move it into, I can send it control alt three, and this can be my music section. And I can have like five or six sections of music and say, Hey, like, let me test this one out. Let me, let me move it over here. Let me try another podcast piece of music um, and test it out. It, it, it works better for my brain. And um, for people who just want to just edit the thing, you don't want to get into big effects things. You don't want to add a bunch of, you know, bells and whistles. You just want to edit a few voices uh, and get it out and put it on your podcast page. Uh, it's super helpful. Okay. That actually may, uh, may lead into my next question, which is um, from Stephanie. She asked, um, 
what type of audio do you think Hindenburg is best for? Storytelling, uh, with music, interviews only, music only, or is it good for everything equally? I think it's good for everything. I, you know, I um, mostly have experience with, in terms of podcasts, interview podcasts, which Hindenburg is great for, because again, you can just create, you know, a few tracks, one for each person, and then maybe you add some music at the bottom. But I also produce, um, as a, an environment reporter, I've produced, you know, stuff in the field that has a lot of sound in the background, and you can do things with music. I've certainly produced audio pieces that use music in this. Um, it, the, 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 the editing kind of chain of things that you do is the same, whether it's you're using music to transition out of a segment, or if you're doing a narrative audio piece like you would do on This American Life. Um, Hindenburg is great for that. Um, it doesn't have a lot of the sound manipulation, um, kind of warbly effects or things like there is, there is a version of Hindenburg that does that, but I think those are more, if you're really getting into the sort of effect stuff, then you might already have the audio training. You might be more suited for doing something like Pro Tools or GarageBand or Audition or something like that, where there's a little bit more fine tuned control. Um, but you know if you need that. You know if you have that experience and you want to do that. Um, if you're not sure, Hindenburg's probably a good place to start. I will say that Hindenburg has two main um, options that I would suggest. Hindenburg Journalist, which is the basic version, which is what I have right here. It's about 95 bucks. Um, and it is good for just kind of basic editing and getting your podcast out. There is the Hindenburg Journalist Pro, which is the next step up, which I think is about 390. Um, sometimes it's on sale. Uh, and that has a few additional um, options, including uh, recording multiple voices. You can record one person on one track, so maybe track one is you. And if you're doing a backup recording of your guests, you can do them on track two. You can kind of make the, more, make the recording setup a little bit more complex. Um, and you can do a few things around um, loudness normalization, which is required for kind of making your podcast sound like those really big podcasts like This American Life. Um, it has a few more bells and whistles on the back end. Okay. Um, Amber asked, uh, what are the best practices for editing a long recording? Do you listen and edit as you go or do you um, listen to the whole piece and make notes at timestamps and then go back and edit at the end? That is, that is totally up to you. I find for, so for interviews that I do in reporting, I find that I will often, as I'm interviewing someone, I will be taking notes as I'm talking to them about what they've said that's interesting. Um, that could be just writing a few words on a page, you know, you, uh, excuse me, as you're recording on your Hindenburg session, uh, and you've got that, you know, it's, it's creating that red rectangle, and you've got a timestamp at the bottom as it's going along, you can, I like to make a note and say, okay, at 1014, they said this really cool thing about how they started their business. Um, but I don't edit as you go. And actually Hindenburg doesn't let you do much as you're recording. It's kind of, it goes into a recording mode and doesn't allow much else. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that as you're going, but, but in terms of after you've done the, the interview and it's recorded and it's in your editor, it's kind of up to you. If you want to record, go through the whole thing, you can maybe make some selections and cuts and trim a few things. Um, so you've got a few, again, um, you know, naming section is a, you know, great section here, uh, you know, start, started a business. You can, you can kind of do that note taking as you're listening through the first time. Um, but in terms of interview podcasts, a lot of them are not going to be really, really closely edited like a narrative podcast would be like a This American Life. So what you can do is you can just listen through and make edits as you're doing it and say, oh, crap, I made a lot of noise with my chair here. I need to trim that in um, and, you know, fade it a little bit so that I, you know, you don't hear that as my guest is talking. Those are small edits you can kind of make as you listen through just once. Um, I know some people like to do, you know, one listen through where they just listen for good sections and bad sections. Maybe I want to cut out the bad sections and then do the edit. Um, I have always kind of just gone once through. So. Okay. Sounds good. Um, also, Landis would like you to address the noise reduction, compressor, and equalizer functions, if you can. Yes, I knew that would come from Landis. Uh, so, so Landis makes a great point, which is that there are a few things um, under the effects window. So in audio editors, pretty much across the board, there are a few things called equalizers and compressors. So when I talk about doing effects, you uh, in Hindenburg, you want to go to the track that you're working on. So let's say my, my voice right here on track two. Click on the effects one, which is little, it looks like little knobs or faders, and it opens up a window of nothing, 
which is really helpful. Right click on one of them, on one of the empty ones, and you can pick from a number of options um, of essentially modules that create different effects. I have a few third party ones down here, but the main ones are equalizer and compressor. So I'm gonna click on equalizer and it's gonna populate that one with an equalizer. Now EQing is kind of a, an, a science um, and I won't go too much into it, but just know that if you have particularly, um, if you have a lot of background sound like an AC unit or maybe some rumble outside from a vehicle that kind of is just like, if you look on the, um, on the waveform here, it's a lot of this lower stuff. It's a lot of this kind of rumble, this kind of lower peaking with the higher peaking being me talking, you can tell I have what's called a noise floor that's kind of high. So to get rid of some of that, we can turn on an equalizer by populating it like I did with that right click. It opens up and it creates, it's got a few knobs on it, but you could just turn it on and leave it like this because what it has here, this fade basically means get out all the junk that's really low rumble, like a car or um, you know an airplane going by or things like that. EQing, um, can subtract sounds from your from your audio and accentuate others. Um, and you can do that by using these knobs. Uh, it takes a little bit of playing around, see how it affects. You can actually, you know, make changes as you're listening through something and you can, you know, adjust and see how it affects the audio in um, real time, essentially. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable using it, you can just turn it on like this, leave it on with this little, what's called a high pass filter, but it looks like a little ridge um, and just leave it there and close it. And you'll know it's on because it has a little on thing and just leave it like that if you don't want to do anything else. Pretty pretty harmless. The other thing that uh, Landis mentioned is a compressor, which is the second thing that I would always recommend having a compressor in your podcast. A compressor takes the extremes of your audio. So say someone shouting or laughing, which would be really, really loud on a waveform. Um, let's say kind of Kyle and I were laughing at the end here. So they are going to be hotter sounds. And the lower stuff, like someone maybe was a little quiet, um, it's going to bring those up while pushing the top ones down. So instead of having a, um, a podcast that has really high highs and really low lows that you can't hear while you're listening to your, you know, your podcast in the car when someone's listening to it, um, it compresses them so they're more normalized and they're closer together. And you can do that by right-clicking, adding a compressor in there. It opens up this very simple, simple tool. And you can just pull this knob up with your clicking and dragging and three to four dots, this shows how strong the tool is working. I recommend three to four dots as pretty good. Um, what you'll notice is that, it, again, it pulls up those, those lower sounds so that they're warmer and they're kind of louder to the ear while it brings down the really loud ones and kind of reels them in like a rope um, and, and makes your podcast what's called um, compressed or normalized. And there, there are other slots here you can use for other plugins, which if you have them, if you bought them, you probably know how to use them or you've looked up how to use them. You can add it, what's called a chain of different effects, um, one on top of the other. Sarah, was there another question? Well, yes, sorry, I had a little technical difficulty. Here, fine. I'm back. Um, so, Kef asks um, if you can explain how to tweak background music, for instance, getting it as low as you want. Yeah. So that's a great example of um, something that I was going to cover in my session. So I'm glad we can get to it now. Let's talk about using background music with your podcast, which in the case of an interview podcast might be one person talking, another person talking, maybe you have a segment of like 15 minutes and then you're like, all right, we're going to take a break and let's get some music in here to transition out to maybe you've got an ad or maybe you just want to set, you know, 20 seconds of music. Uh, and then change ideas to the next section. So how we're going to do this is we are going to, I had a section we're gonna talk about this with. Um, let's go to right here. So right here, I actually created a break where I said, okay, we're gonna finish this section. I tried to do with Dragline. I tried to do long form print journalism, but with an NPR voice and NPR ethics. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with Kyle Bass. All right, so that is the end of a section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut these. I've selected and hit B. I'm going to select all the stuff that comes after it. And this is a really helpful thing if you're, if you're assembling a really big podcast, selecting many regions, you can click on one and hit shift, and then you can click all the way over at the end 
as you're holding shift, it will select everything in between, kind of like in a lot of different other audio programs. And I want to do the same thing for Kyle. So I'm going to select from here all the way back. So it, it selects, essentially when you're holding shift, it selects everything in between one bit of audio, one region and another. So now everything's yellow. I know I can move it together. And I'm going to transition outwards from us. So we've got the end of our audio here. The, the question about editing the volume of, of any sort of audio, whether that's music or another, music is a great example. Editing from the top, of a piece of audio, you'll notice that it has this change, this minus three, four, five dB, that's decibels, that's the volume of the audio. And you can tell, if I put it up here and play it, this is a bit of music. You can tell the, the audio went really uh, high up there into the red. Hindenburg is really helpful because it has this color coding. You always want your audio to stick roughly around minus 12. That's basically good sounding audio on average most voices should be around that. You don't need to super edit everything so that they're hitting 12, but 15 to nine is a good range for a human voice. Um, but that was a little loud. That, that music was a little loud, so it would probably be overpowering uh, behind our voices. So what we can do is we can pull it down. So I'm grabbing the top of it, clicking and dragging it down, and it's telling me how much I'm going down. I was going down about, um, going down about you know two decibels here, that's how much I moved it down from where it was before. The first number on the left is how many uh, decibels, that's, that's a measurement of volume, is it, it's down from the audio when it brought in, it was brought in. So it analyzes the audio, it says, like, here's the benchmark, here's zero, and it will say, okay, from the benchmark, you pulled it down 15 decibels. Not super um, important for kind of basic editing, but that's gonna change the volume when I pull it underneath Kyle and I. Voice and NPR ethics. All right, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with Aquile Bass. All right, so that would be a great place for the audio to come up. This is a great opportunity to talk about um, slopes, which is uh, raising audio within a region. So remember the region is, in this case, the entire song. But let's say I wanted to just do the first, I don't know, 45 seconds of it, it's right there. That is going to be really helpful for changing the, uh, the volume within a region. And how I do that is I select the region Actually, I can just have it not be selected. Highlight the track that it's in. So that's the music track here. Highlight a section. This is me finishing talking, and then it's kind of just the music going. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to click the top of the audio region outside of the shaded. That's really important. Outside of the shaded area and pull it up. And so now I'm changing the audio of the region, but I'm not cutting the region. So it goes from having the same volume to this. All right, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back with Kyle Bass. So it's, it's louder, you can tell it's getting into the little yellow area, whereas this would just be kind of in the blue, too, 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 um, too soft to be audible on its own, but it's kind of underneath other people talking. So a lot of like This American Life stuff, they'll add in music underneath people talking. And then when it's on its own, you'll do what I call it a slope. You will highlight an area that you want to change and pick outside of it, and you will change the volume like that. So that is a very easy thing to do to change volume. I hope that's an answer to your question. Okay, so we have time for one more question. And I was, um, this one kind of came from several different people. So it's basically, uh, what do you, um, or how do you recommend, mm, what do you recommend for virtual interviews um, to still get clear quality audio? Like what platform would you prefer works, uh, I guess, best with Hindenburg, Zoom or, or something else? Yeah, um, I am surprised by how much I like Zoom audio um, because I think most people have some sort of microphone these days that they're using with their, whether it's a built into a laptop or it's an external like the one I have here. So Zoom is definitely an easy way to, uh, and it even has a record function in within the app that you can use pretty easily. Um, so Zoom is, not, is an option. Skype I've used for a number of years. And whenever you use Skype, you want to make sure that you're recording your side they're recording their side with, you know, Audacity or kind of, a, or even Hindenburg if they have it, um, just to get a, a nice local recording, whether, if they have a microphone, hopefully. Um, and then you have them send you their file. With Skype, it's so buggy that I, I like to have a backup recording as well. Um, I have moved to Discord, which is a kind of a chatting platform that also has a voice option. Um, but I would say 
using Skype is fine. Using Google Hangouts is fine. Using Zoom is fine. But if you can get your guests to, if you can record on your side, just if you're using Hindenburg, just doing that arm record setup like I talked about where you see your, your voice is going along the, the way with a, a waveform, you know you're recording. Uh, and when you hit stop, you've got your recording. Having them record on their side as well with, with a Hindenburg or an Audacity, which is a free um, software that I know we're, we're uh, having a tutorial on later this week. Um, and then having them send that to you, that is a really useful way of doing a two-person podcast. That's called a double ender, which is each person records their sound. And then later on, you uh, line it up. So you've got questions. You, you line up the regions, you, you say, okay, you know, at the beginning of our po podcast, and you notice here, I actually had, um, you know, I had, essentially, if you look at this, um, I had me and Kyle clap. No, not if I have it soloed. So what that is, is I've actually said, okay, one, two, three, clap. And what we're doing is we're syncing up our audio so that when I line up those claps, um, my questions align with his answers, more or less, uh, after he sent me the audio. So. Audacity, Skype, um, Zoom meetings, Google Hangouts, all of it's good. Okay, well, that is all the time we have for Q&A. Uh, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Let's give a big round of applause to Michael Falera. Uh, a reminder to the audience that this session has been recorded and it will be made available as an archive session as soon as possible. So keep your eye on your emails, including your spam and junk folder as it may go Sarah, there. can I add something as well once you're done? Oh. No, um, I, other go ahead and finish and I'll go get some okay. resources for people. Oh, okay. Um, we still have a month of free podcast sessions and panels taking place during the Charlotte Podcast Festival. Check out the full list of sessions and speakers um, and register today on charlottepodcastfestival.com. There is actually um, an audio session um, about audio mistakes. It's a panel that's going to be tomorrow um, from, is it 12 to 1? I think it's 12 to uh, 1, yeah. Uh, yes, and so if you if you want to go to that, you need to register by midnight tonight, just to let you know. Um, you can share your experience by using the hashtag CLT Podcast Fest on social media, and you can also support the festival by picking up a brand new super soft locally printed shirt at charlottepodcastfestival.com. Um, make sure to join us for the virtual happy hour this Friday at 6 p.m. where you can mix and mingle with other podcasters from around the world. Register for it at charlottepodcastfestival.com. And I thank you for attending today's session. I'm Sarah Pollock, and I am going to give uh, Michael the, the final reins so he Thanks, can- Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I just want to share some, some other resources. I've created a, a bit.ly link, um, either bit.ly.com or bit.ly. Uh, slash Hindenburg guide that hit, that's Hindenburg with an, a U. Um, this is a Google document of some of the basic um, shortcuts that you can use. Um, I'll try and I'll post that onto my uh, Twitter, uh, but or I'll we'll try and get it out to everyone. But it is uh, Bitly slash Hindenburg guide 2020. Uh, just kind of all the shortcuts I've gone over and some uh, more advanced ones as well um, to kind of hopefully use as you are going on with Hindenburg. Uh, I've got the, the chart of the comparison between the two products, Hindenburg Pro and Hindenburg um, Journalist, which is the basic one. If you want to look at how they're different, um, they've also got their shortcuts guide uh, on their website as well. Um, and my social is at Michael Falero on Twitter, linkedin.com uh, slash in slash Michael Falero or my website, michaelfalero.com. Thanks so much. Thank you. And you guys have a great rest of your day and the rest of your week.